All right, welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about mounts, scope mounts, specifically this one for the Marlin 3030, old school 3030, sweet gun. I'm, I'm looking forward to the video. That may be next or, or, or I don't know what will actually be next, but this is, this is coming soon. But uh, this has see-through mounts. It's designed so you can use the iron sights in the event maybe that game's too close or or uh, perhaps you're just uh, not comfortable with using a scope yet and you want the option of using both. Well, that's okay and I'm not knocking them. I'm just going to show you some things to expect if you have one, especially one that's this tall. And a lot of see-through mounts, scope mounts are this tall. What happens, you're supposed to be able to put your cheek into the stock of the gun. Cheek tight against your shoulder tight. I can do that using the iron sights. I'm confident I can be quite accurate with those. But when I have to come up, I have to pull my cheek off, of the, off of the stock of the gun to use the scope. No part of my cheek can rest now on the butt stock of this weapon. I lose accuracy, I lose stability. Yeah, iron sights, good. Scope, there's no stability. There's no way anyone can be as accurate with this type of weapon that's not designed for see-through mounts. And now, honestly, I don't know if any of them are. But, like I said, I'm not knocking it. I think it's fine. If you want the option to use both, just don't expect it to be as accurate as this weapon. Let me show you this. I just filmed this. This is the Remington Model 700 6 millimeter. This has a loophole base, loophole rings, and obviously, of course, you want your scope as close to the barrel as you can get it without touching it. See that? Be cheek tied in the weapon. And make sure this is in frame. Very still. I already can tell a noticeable difference between this one and the 3030. So for that reason, I'm going to swap them out. And I've purchased uh, just standard Walmart rings and base for the Marlin 3030. It's just uh, the Weaver Quad Locks. It has two rails on each shot. They look kind of nice. I like them. They're not super expensive. You're not going to pay near what you would for the loophole base and rings, but you know I like it. They're okay. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. The first thing you're going to want to do is just loosen the top of the rings. You know, try not to damage the screws or booger the screws. This screwdriver fits quite well. Make sure your screwdriver fits the task. This is just a, happens to be a cheapo, but whatever works, works. If it's loose and it's slopping around, you'll run the risk of boogering your screws. And that, that doesn't look well. So make sure that when you turn the screws, you're not scraping the back side of the rings. And, Okay, so just take your scope off, clean this, give this some oil. It doesn't look like the rings have damaged or mashed the, the scope tube, and that's, that's good. I mean, you want to make sure this is real clean before you put the new rings back on your new scope. That way you don't put any grit grinding into the barrel of the scope. All right, now for this part. You know, it's very simple, same, same principle. You just want to find the right size screwdriver for the task, and this one works works well. These screws will be short obviously because they're not going far into the receiver. There's a hole right there for this screw. I'm trying not to drop it, scratch anything like I almost did. I find that doing everything is twice as hard when you have to do it in front of a camera. Alright, so slide this down. Continue with this one. It's not a bad idea to put Loctite on these screws. The back two screws of this mount were already loose. I didn't loosen them. That front screw is loose as well. So there was only one screw that was tight on this mount. And that's not uncommon. 
really recoil has a tendency to turn things loose. Let's clean this up real good. I'll oil this, I'll oil the scope, and I'll oil the rings, uh, actually not the rings inside that touch the barrel of the scope, but I'll oil the base of the rings before I set them on here. All right, here's the Weaver two-piece base that I'll be using. Let's unpack it. Now I'm just assuming that my medium size height scope rings will uh, actually set over these iron sides. It was just a guess, so we're about to find out. We'll find out together, and I'll upload the video even if they don't fit. That way I give you an idea what you need. Now these have notches in the base, and as long as you put your notches, I mean it just depends on your scope how these notches line up. Let me get a ring out so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, here's the ring, and if you'll notice, it has a screw on this side to tighten the, this up against the tip off. So what you do, you put that rod in the center of the ring, rest like so. It'll rest in there like that. When you tighten this down on it, it can't slide forward or back. Now based on where that notch is will be how you set it on your receiver based on how far, what it is, I mean you just kind of use trial and error. Normally I like to keep the rings in the middle of each tube, so whatever that will be, let's just put them on and find out. So, screws to the base. Alright, so I've set the front base on and I'm about to set the second one, the rear one. Just get everything snug at first. Don't torque the front one down before you get the back one down. Like I said, it's a real good idea to put Loctite on these threads, these screws. But for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I don't have any right on hand, so I'll probably take it back off and redo it. And push down with good pressure. Make sure you don't slip or booger. Okay, so now that's done, we'll put the rings on. Okay, at this point I'm going to take the tops of the rings off and see if they're actually this base or if these rings are actually going to be tall enough to get over the iron sights. Alright, I'm going to have to turn the front base around because the front edge of my scope was actually touching the iron sights. I think I can get past it if I just turn this over. Now put this base back on, tighten it up, set the scope in. Let me turn the back one around now and see if it'll make it work. I think it's going to put the, two, the scope too far. I'm close, but I think it's going to put the scope too far away from the eye. Jeez. I can clear right there. If you'll see, there's the front of the scope. I can't go back any further than that. Let's just see if we get lucky. I'm gonna snug a couple of these rings and then hopefully I'll still be able to reach the eye and I'll have my son see if it'll still fit his eye. All right, so I had my son come in and we checked the scope to his eye. I just barely have clearance between the iron sights. Make sure I can get that in the frame. Between the iron sights and the top of the scope. And just barely is perfect. 
You want to scope as close to the receiver as you possibly can get. And I can take those off and get even closer with the, with the low rise mounts, but I, you know, I didn't want to have to take the, I wanted to leave the gun original like it was when it was purchased. So what we're gonna do, uh, he tested with his eye, it's fine. The scope is as far forward as it can go. Um, against, it's actually against the front ring. So I'm gonna tighten everything down. Make sure your reticle's uh, up and down, left and right, and it looks perfect. You're not looking through a crooked reticle. We've checked that, we've snugged it, and we're gonna put the rest of the rings on. An important note, when you're tightening these rings down, tighten each side the same. You want the same exact spacing between the ring and the base of the ring. What I do, I just spin them all in until they start to touch. And you may have to back one off if you get it too tight against the ring. So if you'll notice, I have these too tight. Both of these screws are too tight. There's not enough gap between this. All we do is back one of them off, back each of them off, about, uh, I don't know, whatever that is, 180 degree turn, then tighten. First drop your wrench, all right, and then tighten each side back down. You're trying to split the gap and make it as neat as possible. See, those gaps are perfect. This one's a little bit too loose. Hope you can see this. So you just tighten them down to where all the gaps match. Once you get one side, work to the other side. Continue the process. It's kind of laborious and slow, but if you do it right, it'll look better and you'll have less chance of back off. Your scope will get constant pressure on both sides and you won't be as likely to turn your reticle as you tighten it down. Look at both sides, maintain spacing. Everything's looking good. All four of these need to be a little bit tighter. Don't get all crazy with this and just bear down on it. They're not even designed to be as tight as they'll go. A lot of scope tubes have been damaged and bent by people just really torquing the heck out of these. All right, so now that we're finished, it's been checked with his eye. He'll be able to get it. Because it is a medium mount, your scope is going to be taller than it had to be. But if you'll notice, I'm not sure I could handle a standard mount with this weapon. With, I'm just speaking specifically for the Weaver quad lock system, because it is close. I bet at the, at the barrel of the 40 millimeter scope, there's, there's not a full quarter of inch gap, even without the iron sight. So for his eye and for this system, for this mount, for this weapon, it's uh, optimal for what it is. So it's, uh, it's, it's gonna work fine. He can put his cheek against the side of the weapon. The scope's a little bit too far back for me, but to be comfortable, but it fits him fine. So there you go, the finished product. And they're kind of good looking, I mean, I, I don't mind them at all. And once you're done, too, obviously this will have to be re-zeroed in, but I haven't tightened these yet. And because you can't get them really thumb tight, you can turn them, but you need to get a big, big flathead screwdriver and put in there and, and turn those actually pretty tight. You don't get crazy with it, but it needs to be pretty tight. There you have it. Changing the mounts on a nice Marlin 3030.